component of the output frequency is 50 hertz. This is square wave. So the switching frequency as well as your fundamental frequency are the same. Okay? <coughs> Determine the value of the DC source voltage that is required to establish a load current that has a fundamental component of 15 amperes RMS. Okay? So the question directly asks you about tells you the value of the RMS value of my fundamental current. Fundamental component of my current, right? Which means I know I01 RMS is equal to 15 amperes. Okay? How do I get this current? This current is just Z1, right? Because this is at fun, what that frequency it is. So, and what is VO1 RMS? Yes. Or, in terms of maximum value, because you know our equation, right? The equation which relates your DC voltage and your VDC and V1, right? It's in terms of maximum value, right? So can I say I01 max is equal to 15 root 2 is equal to V01 max by Z1? Because our VDC, we have to find the DC source voltage, right? The DC source voltage and the fundamental common relationship is with respect to the maximum value. The VO1 max is what we have, right? The equation, what the formula sheet tells us. So that basically VO1, the equation is basically VO1 max. <coughs> is equal to 4 VDC by 5, right? So, basically I need to find this so that I can find my VDC. So, I just find in terms of the maximum current here, that's all. Yes. Fundamental. In your AC system, any circuit which has 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. Right, corresponding to that frequency. One is fundamental, third is the third harmonic, fifth harmonic, seventh, ninth, eleventh, etc, 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 etc. Okay? So, we can find out our... Can I find out Z1 here? R square plus <coughs> omega L. So, it's 100 pi into... This is your amplitude, your magnitude, sorry not amplitude, magnitude of your Z. You are not worried about the angle here, just the magnitude here. Okay, so what is this value? 50? 15 square plus 100 pi to 10 raised to 0.01, so just pi square, something like that. Right? You get some value like this. So can I say what is VO1 max? Write this down below. It's going to be VO1 max is IO1 max into Z1 which is 15 root 2 into 16.33 which is 225 to root 1 pi for 300 something. 325.1 Again, this value looks familiar, right? So now, tutorial for first question answer is 325.1. But it's just a coincidence, don't assume anything. Okay? 325.1. Okay, this is your VO1 max value. So now, VO1 max is 4 VDC by. 
I which implies I get a value of two pi pi point three. What this literally means is to get a fundamental current component of 15 amperes, my VDC has to be 255.32 volts. Okay? That's all here. What's the next part? Determine the total harmonic distortion of the load current, assuming the load current consists of harmonic up to and including the fifth order. Up to fifth order and including the fifth order, which means the harmonic present are I'm going to have load current component is going to be what are what are going to be the load current components? I'm going to have the fundamental, right? I3 and I5. So my harmonic distortion is going to be so let's say in terms of PSD going to be I distortion square by I1 square so not I1 square I1 but these are again RMS values so I distortion square is going to be I3 RMS square plus I5 RMS square by I1 RMS right PSD is just PSD is just a distortion divided by the current, right? So you're going to have the distortion now in our case is just a third and the fifth harmonic, nothing else. So we have third harmonic square plus your fifth harmonic square divided by your fundamental here. Right? After square rooting it. So uh, what is unknown here? I know I1 RMS. I01, I1, same, huh? 15 amperes. Do I know I3 RMS? No, I don't know I5 RMS. But I can find out V3 RMS, V5 RMS. I can find out Z3 and Z5. And then I can correspondingly find out what is my I3 RMS and my I5 RMS. Okay? So I can just say it's always easier to make a table in this case. So, you know, then you are, you can sort of look and see if your values are correct or not also. This is my N. This table gives you the max values, the voltage and the current. We and what we find out is the maximum value, not the RMS value. Okay? So this is this table is in terms of your max values for V and I N. Z and is only one value. There is no max or RMS or any other value like that. It's just one value for your Z and. Okay? What about V3? You can use your formula to find it out. Or just divide this by 3. V3 is going to be V1 by 3. You have this formula, right? Your Vn is 4 Vdc by n pi, right? So n is 1, I get 4 Vdc by pi. If n is 3, I'm going to get 4 Vdc by 3 pi. Now, 4 Vdc by 5 pi, 4 n is equal to pi. This I get here of V3 is 1, 0. 8.7, D5 is 68, 68, 65, right? 65.02. The impedances, how do you find the impedances? Z3 is, so I can say, Zn is, Z3 
yes r square plus n omega l square that's all how we find for the sin pwm different z mf z mf plus 1 etc it's exactly the same thing i just replace the mf with n here that's all <laughs> their mf was used because it's the ratio here here n is the nth harmonic that's all effectively both formulas are exactly the same you don't have to see oh this is a different formula from that <coughs> don't think that is the same thing you find it out this way here you're going to get z3 is tell me the values now 17.71 and z5 is 21.7 yes So I should be able to find out my currents also. So my I three is six point one two for me, and I five is two point nine nine three. So I have I max though I three max I five max. I don't have the I R M S value yet, so I can just find out. root 2 by root 2 but why what do you get here 32.13 Right, where you have a DC component side. For example, in your AC to DC rectifiers, right, the voltage output has a AC com DC component also, right? For that, there is no root two. For the DC component, there the RMS value is same as your average value, which means you are not going to have, you know, a root two. So in that case, your answer is going to be totally wrong. So it's always good to go for the definition which says the RMS value. But DC value RMS are the same thing. That's why we use you know, for root two. It's exactly the same thing. I have fifteen root two by root two cancel out the root two is going to give you the same value anyways. But good to use in terms of your RMS value. Okay. Any questions, you guys? Okay. We started at 4:30, I think. The, it's just 5:20. We are really finishing three questions, huh? With all the questions and answers. Remember, I said it took me just half an hour to finish this paper. With still, with you guys, it's just 15 minutes with all the things. The first three questions, no, not first, three, first, third, and second and fourth question. What's the next question? It is intended to reduce the BSD of the load current to below 50 percent. Currently, it is 32 percent. Suggest a suitable scheme to achieve it, which means 32 percent definitely not less than 15 percent. Which redu reduction would make it less than 15 percent? I3 or I5? You can try both, but you will realize that only if I reduce I3, it's going to be less than 15 percent. Actually, it's 14 percent. I think. It's just 2.9 and divided by 15, right? implement a scheme where my output waveform is not the full square wave, I am going to squeeze it in, right? <coughs> Which means, instead of
this, what I'm going to get is <coughs> something like this, right? I want to implement something like this from this. <coughs> so when this question says, such is a suitable scheme, right? You need to draw, find out the alpha first. Okay, that's the first thing. Which is 30 degrees here. So you know what 30 degrees is. You need to draw out the switching diagrams also. Of course, the scheme is how you switch, right? Alpha equal to 30, how does it have significance in your inverter? Only if you are able to draw out the switching diagram, only then it's significant. Make sense? Suddenly everybody says, oh. <laughs> It's the same thing as what we did in the tutorial. We drew out the S1, S2, S3, S4 corresponding when they are on or off, right? Same thing. Only two things you have to remember. One is, if S1, S2 are on, then I have positive voltage. S3, S4, I have, I have negative voltage. If I have S1 and S4 on, I have zero volt. If I have S3 and S2 and S3 on, I have zero volt. Right? In this scheme, I want zero volt, positive volt, zero volt, negative volt, right? Another thing you have to remember is each switch has to be utilized properly. You cannot have, you cannot underutilize a switch and overutilize a switch, <laughs> which means each switch has to be utilized at least pi. Best case scenario is you use it for pi. So and continuous pi, not that I use it for pi minus alpha here and then alpha somewhere else. Why? Having pi, you know, switching is pi switching means I have fifty percent duty cycle for the switch, which is not varying from my square wave inverter switching here. Right? This angle fifty percent duty cycles here, right? Same thing. Only difference is I just have to shift my waveforms a bit. That's all. Let's look at this. <coughs> find out the new VDC or anything or anything like that here. Currently nothing is asked us to find out, right? But <coughs> the, when I say the load current has to be reduced, it generally means that I just need to remove the harmonic, but I still need to maintain the other parameters. I cannot reduce my this value. I still need to maintain the load current RMS as 15 amperes. That cannot change. Okay? So in this case, what will happen here? If I draw out the switching diagram here, S1, S2, S3, the most obvious part. S1, S2 when they are on and S3, S4 when they are on, we know that. S1, S2 when they are on, it's plus V and when S3, S4 is on, it's minus V. Right? That's the evident easy part. So, I can, in this case, plus V, S1 and S2 are on. So, I have S1 here and S2 here on. Okay? S3, S4 are definitely off during these two periods. Sorry. They are off using here and I have them on here. S3 and S4. If I know these, during these periods, S1, S2 are on, S3, S4 are on during the negative half cycle. For minus V, I need S3, S4 to be on. This much I know. 
So I can have a combination of either S1, S4 on to make a zero voltage or S2, S3 on to make a zero voltage. You can choose, you can choose either one, it's not a problem. So let me start, let's say here. I start with saying I am going to switch on S2 and S3 here. can have either S2, S3 or S1, S4, up to you. But I am going with S2, S3 here. Which means, S1 has become off now, during this section. <coughs> right? S2 is on during that section. I am going to have something like this. S3 is on during that section. But S3 cannot be on here. So S3 has to be switched off here. S4 is still off here, S4 is off here. Okay? <clears throat> Pick and choose one and just draw the corresponding graph, that's all. Nothing else here. So, at this instant what happens? I can have either S1, S4 on here or S2, S3. What happens if I continue to switch, just switch on S2, S3? What happens? Let's see. <clears throat> if I switch on S2, S3 here again, then S1 ends here, S2 continues. Already in my this cycle, my S2 is already connecting for a very long period of time, right? S1 has become less. It's no longer, this is not no longer 50% of the cycle, right? This is my whole period. This here, and if I switch on somewhere else, I don't get exactly a 50% new recycle key, right? I'm actually having to generate multiple pulses in my one period itself, right? So instead of that, what I'm going to do is, instead of S2, let's say I'm going to switch on S1, S4. So I switch on S1 here, I switch on S4 here. So I switch off S2 here, my S3 still remains on. Oh. Now I want to, do I want to, how much time is S1 conducted? This is pi minus 2 alpha, this much is pi minus alpha, I still have, I can still conduct S1 for another alpha. So, anyways I can just carry on here. And see this nicely links up to my S1, S4 also there. So this corresponds to my and S2 is going to be 0 here all the way to <coughs> so it has to be off here, off here, S2 is on and here you're going to have S3 continuously. So you're going to have S2, S3. So the logic is in the space, the common continuous zero space, right? I switch on the same switches. I don't invert any switches here. So it's either S1, S4 <coughs> here or S2, S3 here. Similarly, this, its previous component is here. So S2, S3 can either be here or it can be here, up to you. But you can have to make sure that you choose one and stick to that. Don't mix and match. Don't go S2, S3, S1, S4, S2, S3, S4. Don't do that, please. It's still a valid switching scheme, but then you have to design the corresponding switching pulse also. For sine PWM, when we do sine PWM, right, what is the first thing we teach you is how to design, how to derive the sine PWM, right? A sine wave, triangle wave, comparator. If you design something else, you have to accordingly say, okay, oh, I have something which gives me 40% duty cycle, 60% duty cycle. Here, the only difference is. This switch is started after alpha. Okay? This switch starts from minus alpha. This switch starts, say somewhere what? Pi plus alpha. This switch starts from pi minus alpha. So once I give the pulses for these switches at these corresponding points, I still give a 15% cycle throughout. I don't have to worry about timing again. 
is just the initial time when I switch on, I have to worry about that alpha. After that, don't worry about it at all. So this gives you my switching scheme here. <coughs>